the people that are in a business and they're pulling their hair out and they're frustrated and they they're frazzled and tired like this this can help and help much more than you may appreciate <laughs> because like i said i've seen both sides of this coin and i'm much happier on this side hey it's dave we are here today sharing stories inspiration and insights from business owners that are on the journey to build a systems driven company today i'm joined by eric wilkie from tec health they're an emergency services company now, I know, Eric, you've got some great stories and great wins. So perhaps just to start, if you can tell us a little bit about the work that you guys do and whom you serve. Yeah, so we we have a company that provides medical staffing to emergency departments. So specifically physicians and uh, advanced care providers or advanced practice providers. So nurse practitioners and physician assistants. Uh, so we're typically hired by a <clears throat> hospital system to sort of uh, hire and manage that side of uh, the business. Um, we This is our second go around. We did the same business a number of years ago and sold, uh, I think, in 2010. Um, and back then, I think I would have paid somebody to take the company uh, just because we, um, we didn't have any systems in place. Uh, it was too much cult of personality and more business just meant more headaches and trouble and time away from home and you know, it was, uh, you know, you, you'd get a new contract and you'd groan and be depressed, <laughs> uh, <laughs> which is probably not a good way to grow a business. Uh, and so when we started this this round of things, when we were sitting around and talking and sort of developing our plan, we, we said, we're not going to make the same mistakes that we did before. And uh, we want to build something from the ground up um, that can function without so much bottleneck. And so uh, that's kind of how the journey started. Um, <clears throat> we've found our way into um, traction in EOS. Yes. And just started in ingesting more. And in, uh, uh, we love traction. Uh, we've been using it for a long time. Um, and they've got a, a section on building your systems, uh, which we all agreed upon. But I, I don't know if we implemented as successful as we could have. <clears throat> and we we still were finding some some issues uh, with some of our process, and uh, and then uh, we came across this crazy book called Systemology. Uh, I, I read that one as well as a couple others, but uh, uh, we like Systemology the best. That seemed to suit us, um, and so then we started putting that together. Um, we were in fairly good position. Uh, we had tried to document everything on a on a wiki so that when we had onboarding, you know you'd go someplace and it was reproducible um and that worked well for certain segments but we couldn't get other segments of the business uh well controlled um and so uh since we've kind of started that journey with systemology we found our system champion we got it all locked down and documented and, and did the whole film with the phone and then work the process and take it back to the the person and uh and that that is really sort of taken it further uh we're i think we're going to add three or four new contracts this calendar year and none of us are sweating it so yeah i love that you're a prime example of going through the process just doing it getting it done finding the right person and then building out a runway for them to continue to build systems culture the, the systems champion piece is something i'm talking more and more about because i feel like it's such an essential element I'm curious to know how you found your systems champion. Was it someone on staff or did you hire external? Was it obvious to you? Yeah, so we we had um, some people that kind of got hired at some lower level roles, but were very talented, uh, had good attention to detail and were very dependable. Um, so kind of at the higher up, uh, you know, my business partner, Keith, uh, you know, we we like coming up with ideas. We like getting things implemented, but on the lower level ground details, um, I've got some areas where I'm good at it. He's got some areas where he's good at, it, but to this particular getting these systems documented and rolled out was neither one of our strengths. Uh, and so if it were up to us to get it done, it, it wouldn't happen. So, uh, so we did identify people within the company that I said, you know, they're, um, they have a lot more potential uh, than where they are. Uh, and so we brought them in and said, hey, 
read this book. And then in a week, we're going to come back and we're going to talk about this. And so uh, we handed out the book. We had a small team, uh, one person that was going to be managing two. And then we had a person managing, we had the systems champion, then a, then a helper, an associate for the systems champion. Yeah. Uh, went said, you know, here's all the things that we're worried about. These are the most critical things we need to get documented. Uh, because if Daryl, who's our controller, got abducted by aliens, we would be hosed. <laughs> like, we don't know all the things that he does, and we don't know where all the keys are and how he puts it all together. And uh, and it was hard for Daryl to take a vacation because like, he just couldn't take that much time off because he was so, we were so dependent on his function, and it was all in his head. Uh, he had some things documented, but, and it was the classic you know, it's just going to take me longer to train somebody and just rather than just get it done. Right. Which is the, that's the, the, the that's alarm right. bells. When you hear yeah. that, it's the alarm bells going up. It's like, no. Nope. <clears throat> so we, uh, and we just put things on a priority list and just started knocking them out. Um, it, you know, it took you know, maybe 12 months to kind of work through our whole list. Uh, but Daryl took a nice long cruise vacation with his wife and, no issues. Things got done. <laughs> there were no problems. I love that. That's the best way to test your systems is to send that team member on a holiday and he would have loved it too. So when it comes to uh, thinking about the resources, the time, the effort that you have to throw at this to get it done, like it doesn't just happen. It's funny. You said, oh, we're a small team. And it sounds like you actually put quite a bit behind this. You had your systems champion, you had a supporter. Obviously it would have taken... Uh, time from some of your key team members was was that something I know this was your second go round with the business and if I don't know if that made it more obvious to you or yeah I don't know if there's anything that you can speak to about how you thought about the investment in getting it done right right because you know there's the question of you know you're spending resources and sometimes money and is there an ROI yeah uh, and that can be tricky like I we were not willing to put together a bunch of metrics to measure the pre and post uh, and then say, all right, you know, yes, this was worth an ROI because we knew what our life was like before. Yeah. Uh, and we knew that we did not want that life. Like that was, that, um, that did not make an enjoyable business. That, that was a, you know, a, a chain around your neck, you know, <laughs> dragging you down all the time. Uh, and so just based off of prior, uh, we, we said there's no way for us to grow and to grow successfully without having these building blocks in place. So for us, it was the ROI was infinite. <laughs> like we just we weren't going to be able to to accomplish what we wanted to unless we had this you know solidly locked down. Um, because neither one of us wanted to be in the office 80 hours a week, always putting out fires, always feeling out like figuring out what to do rather than working at a larger level in the business. So we're like, what's the direction? You know. What does our three-year plan look like? What do we? What are these more longitudinal systems that uh, are important for a growth, rather than how do we operate on a day-to-day -day basis, being very efficient? One of the reasons I find business owners give up is sometimes they'll start the initiative and then they don't see an immediate large payoff because there's almost like this cumulative effect that happens. Mm -hmm. The systems start to stack on each other, and you said, "Look, it was probably." 12 months of really consistent work for a good number of team members. So there's definitely an investment in there. Were there any times along that journey that you questioned if you were making the right choice, if your team would adopt this, like, were there any? Uh, we yeah. had, we had no, uh, no reservations. I think, uh, uh, you know, so, you know, some of the things that we were talking about, it's like, you know, we have, we have a group that we call the practice managers. And so these are typically fresh out of college, um, you know, sort of entry level job, but it's vital to mm. kind of the, the efficiency of the function. But, you know, as an entry level job, these are talented kids. They've got college degrees. They get some experience and typically they move up, you know, uh, on their career path. Um, but their, their task is complicated, lots of details. And so we've got we're onboarding on a fairly regular basis because there's turnover, you know, and we want, we built this as mm. a job for these people to gain some experience in the healthcare field uh, where they see a lot, even though it's an entry level job, knowing that these are great people and we'll move on to do bigger and better things. Mm. But, but we couldn't, 
waste huge amounts of time doing the, you know, at the elbow, well, let me just teach you what I know rather than a very clear pathway. I just the ramp up period was too long and there and critical things got missed. And, you know, and at kind of the rate of our business and our particular profession, you know, we can't have those critical things missed. So, so when we started with systemology, the two, two vital areas we wanted is onboarding and ongoing processes and systems for our practice manager group, and then for our, um, our controller and payroll. Uh, so the accounting and payroll side of things. Um, and so those were two, like I said, high value targets for us. Uh, and the practice manager went a little faster just because there was a little bit more resources you know, getting Daryl's time when he's busy all the time, um, getting him time to stop and talk on the video so that they can then take and build the process. But as, it, like you said, it sort of stacks as we did that with Daryl and we were able to say, all right, we've got this well documented. Can we outsource this to another person on the team to give you more free time, right? And so by the end of the process, one of the metrics that I had was Daryl, is your life better now than it was before? Do you feel like you, you, you know, your work-life balance is better? You've got less pressure. You can think of some of these other topics that we need. And he's like, absolutely. So, mm -hmm. so that was, you know, like I kind of knew that that would be the case, but it was nice to get it confirmed. Oh, hey, I know you're tuned in right now, so I'll keep this super quick, but you like awesome YouTube videos, don't you? Well, there's not really that many YouTube channels that create great content about how to systemize your small business. So I wanna make sure that you catch every video that I publish. So if you haven't already, firstly, give this video the thumbs up and then go ahead and subscribe to my channel. You can even hit the bell notification to make sure that you're the first to know when I publish anything. So go ahead, do it right now, I'll, I'll wait a sec, and then I'll transfer you back to the video. Definitely see it. Great systems also help to improve the retention of staff and getting new staff on board and the investment that you make into the team me member is a very costly exercise. So I think you've kind of done two things there. One, you've been able to improve the retention of staff because systems driven companies, people know how to win and they thrive better in that organization. And then equally, when it comes to uh, something that Michael Gerber said to me that always stuck with me. He said, every business is a school and you've effectively taken that approach in your business where you're taking these students on board and the systems and the processes and your onboarding is, is the syllabus and the learning track. That's how they learn and how do we shortcut the time from which they join you to when they can productively add value to the business and that onboarding really has been able to accelerate that. So I kind of feel like you're ticking some of these boxes and the investment, the onboarding is a interesting one also, because I, I talk a lot about, at least in the early days, capture what you're currently doing, not what you would like to be doing with the exception of onboarding, because with onboarding, it is the indoctrination into the way that you do things. Were there any things in your onboarding that uh, addressed or talked to the idea of systems and process like obviously oh, yes. yeah. Should, yeah yeah so so we have depending on where you enter you know, what level of the company you, we've got different onboarding tracks but there's some unified pieces mm -hmm. one is our culture you know and the other is our process so everybody gets that. And then it kind of breaks into something that maybe a little bit more specific, like the clinical staff's gonna be very different than some of the office staff. Um, but yeah, so that was, we wanted to, to preach that early. Um, and then we wanted to highlight uh, wins. You know, we wanted to yeah. celebrate the wins and, and let people know it's, it's worth the investment. Um, so here, here's, a, here's a fantastic win. Uh, to do payroll, you know, we're pulling from multiple systems. We have to get different reports, and uh, and it would take the team three days to process payroll. Uh, there was a lot of manual work involved, and we figured there was some automation that could happen, but the problem is there there just wasn't the time to invest 
and building the automation because the whirlwind was happening. And as we built systems and as we got buffer and mm-hmm. allowed extra time, um, the, the team could then be like, all right, you know, we need to automate some of these things. And so that gave them the ability to take the time and effort to do that. And so payroll went from three days down to about four hours, right? And so you talk about ROI. So we just claimed two days, two and a half days, you know, every two weeks from at least three employees, right? Yeah. Right. And um, so like, so that was a huge win, right? Just that one sliver, uh, you know, kind of not, not really tackling all the other pieces. Mm. How do you think about process re-engineering? So the later stages of systemology is when you look at process and go, right, well, how can that be done better? I don't know if there's any insights you've got from that about whom on the team is best suited for that or how you might think about that. I know there's a lot of change going on with AI. I don't know if that's yet started to impact your industry. That has, that has, we, we've, uh, AI's come back to the AI, but we've, we've got that in a couple areas, but um, in terms of the system re-engineering, one of our culture, and this is prior to uh, systemology specifically, but um, one of it is innovation. Like we want to yeah. be uh, innovative or, or how do I say it if I'm uh, innovative? Is that? <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, um you know, we just want to, one of the things we say, what's the next best step that we can take, you know, because if we do small 1% improvements over a long period of time, that's going to make a big difference. Like you said, it, it sort of stacks. Um, and so one of the things that we we try and talk about, you know, at, at least at least quarterly, if not more frequently, it's like, all right, what part of your job stinks and what can we do to make it better? Like, what's the way to take away pain or, you know, how can we re-engineer or refactor or make this more efficient? And so that's that's a fairly common drumbeat with us. Yeah. Uh, sometimes we're more successful at it than others. Um, but but the, we just built that into a, a natural cadence uh, that we at least bring it up and talk about it. Even if so, nobody comes up with anything that time, like eventually we're going to hit on something. Um, or the market pressures will push and identify something that we hadn't picked out yet. Um so that's one piece on the AI, you know, that's the world is moving in a certain direction, right? I know there's, it's mm-hmm. probably overhyped and, and we'll, we'll hit the peak and we'll come down to the disillusionment phase and then we'll kind of get the reasonable level of adoption. Although that's, that's kind of the classic new technology thing, but AI may be a little different, right? It's growing mm-hmm. so fast and, you know, it's such a logarithmic pace <clears throat> that maybe that doesn't quite apply. But we have invested an employee uh, that's on our HR team that likes AI and is technically uh, oriented and to say, all right, Amy, you get to take one day a week entirely and look at how what's available uh, because it changes a lot and where this might impact on what we do. Uh, So looking at connecting ChatGPT with Zapier and our email and, um, you know, process uh, we use it for some contract review and some legal review although we still use the lawyers for all the uh, the, the uh, final work but just having it take complex data and summarizing it uh, we're also using it <clears throat> where we take uh, a voice file uh, say a, you know you're speaking with a patient and it will transcribe text for a chart mm-hmm. um, and that's been pretty pretty helpful that works pretty well uh, you just have to make sure you adjust the temperature. So I don't want it to be creative. I just want it to be yes. factual. Right? Yeah. Like if you turn the temperature way up to one, it gets very creative. If you turn it down to zero, you get a lot more consistent response based off the input. So, uh, but yeah, so we're trying to figure out like a lot of industries where and how are all the pieces where this is going to interface with us. Yeah, we definitely see a lot more in our space as well the we do a lot of work obviously with process engineering and there's some tremendous wins that can come from just applying different tools and different use cases for ai so i'm always curious as to to how people are applying that i think in in the tail end i don't know if there's any final stories or wins or anything that comes to mind that you'd like to finish on um it could be 
some resistance that you had from the team that you overcame. It could be how the systems champion has flourished into a certain role or if there's a particular quantifiable outcome. I don't know if anything comes to mind. Yeah, so there's uh, there's a couple. The um, hi, we didn't have to. We didn't have a big uphill battle. Yeah, telling people that we needed to do this. I, you know, because like I said, a lot of us with our legacy history know some pain points. Um, yeah, and we tried to. We tried. <clears throat> we tried to do it to a degree. Although I, I think, like I said, systemology really sort of owns our skill set. Uh, so we very much appreciate uh, you putting that all together. Um, so that, like I said, we didn't, we weren't fighting that uphill battle. That I think some people do, or they've got uh, a recognized group that's like, we need to break through this logger jam. But uh, you've got other people that are like, "What are you doing? Are you trying to get rid of my job? Or are you, what, like, why is this? Why is you? You know." So thankfully, we didn't have that. Uh, so some of the things that we saw uh, as we're finalizing this and resulting this is we put it, you know, you talk about it needs to have a one spot that you go yeah. for the master of all knowledge. Uh, I had some ideas, um, but we trusted the team to investigate and pick what they want since they were going to have to administrate uh, and administer the site, you know, pick what worked for them. So they, they picked one. Uh, and as all this information started going, then we just started teaching everybody, don't ask, how do I do X? Go look there first, right? Look there first. If you can't find it, then come ask. Um, and then once that got spread along, like if anything were missing or yeah. if we, you know, people were starting to be like, hey, can you put this on the, you know, put this in the wiki? Can you put this on the, like, uh, so across the board everybody's like they instantly recognized the the value and the power of it and wanted more and uh, and they would give feedback on like you know tweaking or making it a little more clear or whatever so the fact that there was there was so much discussion everybody knows oh go there you know that's where you start with onboarding that's where you start with your questions that's where you see the the, the videos and the process flows and the links to documents and everything you need right there so yeah uh, so that when when everybody in the company's like knows exactly where to go and they're they're pointing everybody else there, then we're like, okay, that was we we got to where at least I wanted to to be from at this point. I love that having a centralized business brain that everybody knows. Ah, we just go here, and it's great because then as team members come and go, you're still capturing and retaining that knowledge inside the organization. And it sounds like you've reached the point, which is, you know, you've built a systems driven cu culture when the team says, this is how we do things here. And they just point to where the solution is. And once you build that culture also, it becomes easier to plug holes because if someone then yes. looks there and something's missing, oh, okay, great. Well, let's put that into place. So I, I appreciate your time and just being a great example for other business owners, that's a big part of what I, I love to do is to to show business owners that are doing it and on the path and can speak two or three moves down. Because for some people, that first step, that level of unknowing, kind of, oh, is this going to work for me? Is my team going to follow it? I think we can kind of help to overcome that. For someone who's kind of still yet to make that step, like I, I I don't even know how you could build a business without process now, now that I've seen it, but do you have anything you could say to someone who hasn't yet embraced a systems driven uh, approach? Um, yeah. So this is where I, this, this pushes a button for me. I like how I'm in some different business organizations and you hear people struggling and you hear what they're talking about and I'm just biting. I feel like biting, like I, I want to, like, I can, I can help you with this. It's not my business, you know, but like, just build the system, just start, you know, like uh, there's so many examples where you, people just, you know, always putting out the next fire and they're struggling and there's, you know, there's only one person that can do this. And, and you're just like, Oh, this breaks my heart. Right. Um, mm -hmm. Cause I've been there. Like I know that pain and I know what it's like on the other side. So uh, if somebody's struggling, it's like, you, you just need to start. Uh, you need to realize you won't be perfect and that's okay. And you won't, and even when you're not consistent, that's okay. Like if you're consistent, at least, you know, 65% of the time, that's way better than what you were before. Right. And it will get better and it will improve. Um, you know, uh, for me personally, 
uh, things are, you know, there's a lot going on. I got a lot to keep track of. I put something on my calendar. Uh, it was once every two weeks. I wanted to talk to the team. I wanted to get the sound, like I wanted to hear what's going on. Give me the updates where you're floundering, what's going you know, So just to that reminder to make sure the system's engaged and moving forward. Um, and we didn't, we didn't have any, these must be done by this month or anything like that. But I just wanted, wanted to start building the momentum, uh, getting the things in place. And so the, those that are, uh, the people that are in a business and they're pulling their hair out and they're frustrated and they, they're frazzled and tired, like this, this can help and help much more than you may appreciate. <laughs> because like I said, I've seen both sides of this coin and I'm much happier on this side. Perfect. Well, thank you so much, Eric. I'll put a link through to Tech Health. People can investigate a little bit more and watch along with your journey. But thank you so much for your time. Uh, thanks, David. I really appreciate, like I said, putting the book together and, and uh, walking through that as well and sharing the knowledge is very helpful. Like it's, you spend, what, 20 bucks for a book and you get all this amazing knowledge. Like that, that's a huge ROI right there. It's, that little money for this much amount of knowledge is fantastic. <laughs>